What's up everybody, Michael here from HighDefDigest.com coming to you today with a quick update about the Apple TV 4K, but first, some context. What's going on is that the Apple TV 4K is currently set to output its frame rate, resolution, and dynamic range capabilities based on the best settings of your TV. So if you have a 4K TV with Dolby Vision that can do Dolby Vision at 60 frames per second, the Apple TV senses this and it outputs its resolution, frame rate, and dynamic range settings based on that. If your TV does HDR10 at 60 frames per second, it picks that. Now, the complication to that is that some people have TVs that can only do Dolby Vision at 30 frames per second, and those people are experiencing HDR10 all the time because Apple wants their interface to be as smooth as possible, which is why they like the 60 frames per second, and it goes to the, so it's gonna pick that first. Another odd situation that comes with this is when you're watching standard dynamic range content like HD movies, when you're watching those 24 frames per second, they're getting upscaled to 4K, which is a good thing. They're getting put into a dynamic range mode, either Dolby Vision or HDR10 via processing, and then the frame rate is being sped up to 60 frames per second. And the results of this aren't always great. You're gonna sometimes see blown out highlights, some shadow crushing, and it's basically not allowing your display to do its best job with particular kind of material because HDR displays often have different settings for HDR material, Dolby Vision material, and or standard dynamic range material. But Apple has just announced that they're gonna fix this in tvOS 11.2. They're introducing what they call match content, which is two features in the video and audio sections that's gonna allow you to select what dynamic range you want your content to be in. Whether it's gonna be native, it's gonna match what it is, would it be that SDR, HDR10, or Dolby Vision, or if you want it to uh, post-process that and upscale it into those. And okay, let me stop myself right there. Okay, so I just finished editing this video. I popped over to the uh, Facebook page and I saw one of our helpful readers mentioned Apple's public beta program, which if you don't know about it, you can go over to beta.apple.com, use your Apple ID, you sign up for it, and then anytime there's a public beta available for OS X, iOS, or tvOS, you can try it out yourself, give your feedback and thoughts to Apple and help them make the next firmware updates and software updates for their various platforms work even better. So for the Apple TV 4K, to find out what firmware it's running for you, you head over to Settings, General, and About. It's the third one listed down. And to update, you head to Settings, System, Software Updates, and Update Your Software. If you've signed up for that beta program, there'll be an extra bar will show up on your Apple TV, and it will allow you to enable and toggle on and off whether or not you want to enable beta updates for your particular device. If you want to, you click yes, you try it out, it downloads, takes four to five minutes, installation starts on and off, and you're good to go. And here's what I can report. I have a few first impressions. I've only checked out basically a couple different clips, but also some clips I knew were problematic for HDR to SDR and SDR to HDR conversions. Basically, if you've seen the animated movie Sing, uh, it's a very cute little animated movie. My daughter loves it. It's uh, basically American Idol with singing animals with a nice little story in it. If you head to the very last scene in Sing, and I won't spoil anything here, but there's a shot of the camera. It's pulling out over and down the front of a theater past uh, the front of the theater is this either rock material or concrete material past the marquee, which is bright white with those bright white lines to hold up little red letters and down to the characters' faces. Now, when you're watching the SDR HD version of the movie and you put it onto the Apple TV 4K, when it gives the faux HDR upgrade to it, all of that detail, the whole front of the theater, the marquee, and even some of the characters' faces are washed out completely. You've lost all of your specular highlights, and that's a big bummer. You turn on match content, you enable it to playback in SDR, and you're getting all of that detail back. Now, this is not a conclusion, uh, you know, conclusive review. I haven't watched entire movies back and forth. I was just looking at it for five to 10 minutes so I could get this video done today. But I have to say that in terms of the errors, if you're seeing errors on your movies and they look weird in fake HDR, go ahead and try out match content. You might be able to get some of the details back in the shadows and again in those brightest areas. Now the big drawback, and here's the con, is that 
anytime you're switching between HDR and SDR modes, your TV is changing its settings and there is the chance for handshake issues and there's gonna be a delay, and I totally saw it. Now, your delay might be completely different if you have a, you know, different displays are gonna do things differently, but on my uh, Loner Optoma laser projector, I had a 12 second delay between the HDR menu system and playback of the SDR movie and seeing actual picture, and then a, a similar six to 12 second delay coming out of SDR mode back into HDR mode. It might have been a little shorter on that side, but that's definitely a loss of form and functionality. So I don't know, I don't, is it, your content's gonna look more natural, it's gonna look the way it's supposed to be, you're gonna be able to see more details if it's an SDR being displayed back in SDR. But at the same time, you know, having to wait 12 seconds every time you pause and come in at a movie, not pause, but anytime you pop in and out of a movie, it kind of ruins the fun of the Apple TV 4K because it's so seamless and so smooth to operate. So. I guess, uh, let me know in the comments, have you tried the beta yet? Are you going to try the beta? Is, is match content and matching the dynamic range important to you? Is being more accurate to your content more important to you than form, functionality, and smoothness? Let us know in the comments below. Uh, please like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and have a fantastic day. Cheers.